OK Artist. What we're going to do today is we're going to figure out what colors we had in our palettes by drawing and then painting out the different swatches. So what I'm going to have you guys do is to take your pad of watercolor paper or your sheet of watercolor paper and put it horizontally across. And then I'm going to want you to open up the palette and line up so that you have space to draw in these colors at the top of the lid. All right, we're not going to have to draw this whole thing. I, mean, I guess we have space we could, but I don't think it's really necessary to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, give it about a half inch, right? And I'm going to just go ahead and trace the palette, right, with a pencil, okay? So you can see that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the palette, and I'm going to go ahead and draw tick marks for each segment right, that does each of these wells that has some color in it. So just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? So do the bottom row. Then I'm gonna slide it over so I can see the side here. I'm gonna do these side rows. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this row over here. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball this over here too. Okay. If you have a ruler, you can use the ruler to draw your lines in, right? But I'm gonna do a tick mark over here so it's nice and straight. If you don't have a ruler, you could always use the edge of your palette, right? And so you're going to just draw in each of these segments. Open up my palette just to make sure. Okay, and then it seems that these wells are long, so we're going to go ahead and connect this here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and put in the horizontal wells. There's four of those. And then eventually we're going to do the lid. And the lid doesn't go all the way across. It actually stops the last four, right? So one, two, three, four. We're going to do it right here. So can you see how these are lining up with the bottom ones? All right, you could do tick marks if it helps you too. I know this is a little confusing, All right? If you don't have any colors on this part of your palette, you really don't need to draw it, but I do. So I have to go ahead and draw that in. So when you think you're done, you might want to just double check to make sure you have the right amount of segments, right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I'm going to have to add this there. Okay, so this is going to be the base or the bottom. 
right? This is the side and this is the lid. So you can label that for yourself so that when you're calling out colors, I can help you place or help you figure out what they are if you can't figure out from the resources, okay? So you can pause that video and get yourself finished drawing out your palette and then we're gonna go ahead and start painting in the colors. So now that you're ready to paint in your colors, what you're gonna wanna do is get yourself a paper towel, right? You're gonna wanna get a cup or a glass of water and you're gonna wanna get out a brush. I would recommend using a brush that holds a lot of water, like your Sumier brush, it's the bamboo brush. It's a nice round brush. You could also maybe use this round brush that you have in your set. It's a number four round, right? That will hold some decent amount of water too. And so usually I don't like to put my palettes on my paintings because I don't want it to drip or get through, but my space here for recording is limited. And so I wanted to make sure I showed you. So in order to use watercolor, you need to activate the paint. These are two paints that I purchased and then I squirted them into the palette. Like I said, hopefully yours is a lot more organized than mine. And so they dry out. And the nice thing about watercolor is that you can keep using these until they're gone and you don't have any color left. So in order to use them, what you do is you dip your brush in water and then get really used to flicking the extra drop off. So instead of like flicking it, right, I should say it, you wipe it on the edge of your dish and then you go in and you activate the color. So you're gonna kind of scrub at the color right, make a little puddle of color. Now, if I wanted to make a lot of color, I could just go in and add more water, right? And then scrub, scrub, scrub. The more I scrub, the more saturated or brighter and darker the color will be, okay? So then what I'm gonna have you do is paint in a swatch of each color that you have in your palette. Now, you might find that your colors, um, you might have repeats, some of these were filled by students who didn't realize that they already had a color or I mistakenly added a color I thought didn't exist in the palette, right? And so you're gonna go ahead and paint. In between each color, I want you to clean your brush. So wash your brush, kind of like scrub it at the bottom of your um, cup and then take off some of the water and go into the next color. So you don't have to necessarily fill or stay in the lines but try to make sure that the colors, you know, don't hit the edge because if you did, let me actually do this, those colors are gonna start to bleed together, right? So in case, if you wanna keep the colors separate and not mixed so that you can tell what they look like in their pure form, go ahead and make sure that you leave a space between each of your colors. So clean water, clean brush, scrub, 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 paint in. You're gonna do this for all of the colors in your palette. Eventually, right, eventually, we will go in and label which colors are which um, so that if you're like, I wanna use a blue, but I don't know which blue to use, I can give you a recommendation and say, hey, try indigo or try the um, phthalo with a P or try the phthalo with a T so that I can help you figure out which colors work best for your work. 